there and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. Come along with our triumvirate of terror as we descend into darkness, hurtle into horror, and plunge into peril. If you've ever been so angry at a parental figure that you've just wanted to eat them, you're in the right place. I'm Justin, and I'm just so thankful for my co-hosts. I'm Nico, and I want to eat your mom. <laughs> Wow. I don't fucking know, man. Wow. I don't fucking know. Wow. Well, I'm Dan, and I'm ready to take a nap after this giant-ass meal I just ate. Mm. Oh, oh. listeners should know that, yes, this is the Monday after Thanksgiving. We've all feasted, hopefully, been thankful for something or the other. But we're here today with the last bit of Thanksgiving spirit, because today we're reviewing Pilgrim. This was directed by Marcus Dunstan, starring Rain Edwards as Cody, Kara Smith as Shane, Courtney Hengeller as Anna, Elise Levesque as Patience, and Peter Giles as Ethan. So we open with a young woman named Cody who is spending Thanksgiving break with her family. Much to her chagrin, her stepmother, Anna, has arranged for pilgrim reenactors to come visit their family on Thanksgiving Day, and they're basically supposed to be reenacting the first Thanksgiving. Her younger brother, and Shane, her father, are both fairly nonplussed with the idea, but just then, two pilgrims, a man and a woman, show up earlier than expected, much to the surprise of everyone. But Nico, how does the surprise go? Not super great. The man introduces themselves as Ethan and Patience, and Patience goes to stay with a friend of Anna's. Note, Cody also has a relationship with her son while Ethan stays in the house to prepare for the Thanksgiving festivities. Cody notices that Ethan is behaving weirdly with a specific interest in her younger brother, but her mother and father dismiss her concerns because Thanksgiving, I guess. Also, her mom really needs this. <laughs> and her boyfriend finds his mother unconscious, but he's then ambushed by the pilgrims and killed. Well, that's unfortunate. And to top matters off, Ethan then invites even more pilgrims to the house, which disturbs Cody further. And if that wasn't bad enough, Patience then shows up saying that Cody's boyfriend and his mother are gone. Now, naturally, Cody decides enough is enough and starts taking action. So she goes over to her boyfriend's house, finds his body, and realizes shit has gone wrong. So she sprints back home to find that the pilgrims have completely taken over and they've actually like locked her parents to a stock. And to, to visualize that, it's not like they were locked to, like, Tesla or something. Like, no. It's like the thing where, like, their hands and what? their head poke through. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't think they're locked to the stock market. Well, you never know. <laughs> and they also kind of, well, like... Well, her dad kind of was. Her dad was, yeah. right? See, yeah. he was locked to stocks. Forex, right? So they locked him to a stock. And, yeah, they also whipped him in the ass a couple times, from what I can tell. So... She frees her parents, but the three kind of suck, and they're eventually captured, and the father is also killed. Naturally, now is the time for Dan to come in and save the day. What happens last? Naturally. Well, lastly, the pilgrims force Anna and Cody to help make dinner while trying to get them to be grateful and thankful for one another. Cody stabs one of them in the head, which does absolutely nothing, <laughs> and briefly escapes, but she is recaptured in time for dinner. Well, unfortunately, the main course... The pilgrims are actually serving Cody's father's head literally on a silver platter and force Anna and Cody to eat his flesh. Just then, all the pilgrims start vomiting blood because Cody smartly poisoned the cranberries. She and her mother defeat all the pilgrims, then head outside to deliver the finishing blow to Ethan. And as a side note, the, the brother Tate survives as well. The end. Nice. Well... Let's get straight into it, shall we? And, you know, if this was like a Christmas-themed episode, maybe we'd put in some kind of, like, sleigh bells. Ching, ching, ching. Or what? how do sleigh bells go? Ching, jingle, ching, jingle, ching. jingle. However sleigh bells go. But because this is Thanksgiving, the transition is going to be... That's, that's wow. the transition, okay? Just wow. use that for the transition sound. Okay, cool. So <laughs> how does this movie look, Dan? I'm going to... You're top turkey here. How does this movie look? I'm glad you asked, Justin. I have a few things to say about how this movie looks. <laughs> so first, they did a kind of an interesting and cool thing where I don't really know how to describe it. I don't know the technical terms, but 
it looks like on some shots, the this scene, like, I don't know if they use a particular lens for this or effect, but, like, it kind of, like, bows out from the the middle a little fish bit. Fish eye? So, so, yeah, I guess fish eye, except not quite that dramatic or that drastic, I guess. But I thought that was really interesting. But one of the big things I noticed, that was, it must have been an editing mistake, and I don't even know how. There's a scene when Patience is about to find the brother when he's hiding, like, near the end. And you can literally, she's translucent. You can literally see Oh, you see, see through, through her. her. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. And I was like, how does that work? Like, how do you accidentally even do that? Oops, I made somebody translucent. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It, it was kind of weird. I don't really understand that. Um, and there were some, like, slow-mo shots and, like, double and triple takes while being slow-mo that I found kind of humorous. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But other than that, I thought it looked looked all right. Dan, I will say, I noticed exactly what you were talking about in respect to the lens. And I've noticed that, I think, in music videos more than mm -hmm. I have in movies. <coughs> also, if I had to guess how you make a person translucent, I don't think that was her. I think that might have been just a stand-in to help frame the shot or something like that. I don't know. But, like... It's so weird because how do you make somebody see through, bro? That doesn't, you can't, it's, it's laws of physics out here, bro. You can't, you can't just do that. Now watch someone tell me how you do that. But I'm just letting you know, I don't think it's possible with humans, bro. But the real question is, Nico, how do you think this movie looks? I th thought the the costume design was interesting. I like the way the pilgrims looked and the overall, like, vibe of the place most of the time but i will say there were a couple times when the just whole vibe of it and color grading just shifted to a real like csi miami type look with really washed out everything in yellow and kind of like green looking just it felt weird it just felt really out of place for every other part of the movie but for the most part, I don't think there were any like big glaring issues for, except for our aforementioned translucent question mark woman. Yeah. And I do also want to mention it was kind of hilarious when the pilgrims started vomiting blood because they were just like, Oh, that was pretty funny. They yeah. were just like spraying out like Hawaiian punch or some shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo. Yo, when's the last time you had Hawaiian punch? It's been a long fucking time. Very true. I've never had it, but I've never had Hawaiian punch. Wow. No, hmm. I was always more of a either Capri Sun or even High C or Sunny D kind of kid. Yeah. I'm fucking okay. Pacific cooler for the wind, bro. Okay. You already okay, know. Okay. But Dan, amazing soft drinks and I guess fruit juice concentrates aside. What did you think about the sound in this movie? I thought the sound was fine um they employed a couple uh, kind of interesting or cool sort of uh, i don't know colonial era style music like there'd be times where <laughs> like you know they'd be like ladies singing or chanting like yeah kinda, like you would hear in colonial times i assume um but the end <clears throat> song kind of threw me off when they're like start killing people it was like this gospel song yeah I except love that it was shit. not only was it gospel it was a live version of the gospel so there's like audience clapping and shit yeah <laughs> and i was like this is an odd choice gospel by itself would have been an odd choice but like okay kind of humorous when you see the 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 visual and the audio together but the the live version was a, a really weird choice to me i wonder if the people who i don't know how the rights to that song was were discussed i can't imagine somebody who cared about that song were like oh yeah we're totally gonna allow this to be in a movie because i'm pretty sure that was a song about like worship and stuff like that and then it was just used for like a bloodbath it was about was being like, grateful that's all i remember yeah but i think it was being grateful in like the divine sense not like i don't think it was like a thanksgiving kind of grateful i could be wrong i could be wrong but Fuck if I know, Re man. Regardless, regardless, Nico, do you have any insights on the sound of this spectacle? Uh, not particularly this time. This is one of those where 
I think aside from a couple moments, it kind of just does its job. All right. Well, Din, the wheel of time spins to you here. Apparently, this movie is actually not really a movie. It's part of an anthology, and I guess you could consider it to be well, more it, of it a... is a movie though. <laughs> well, is it a is it a feature film or is it something else? It's I turned to on you, Hulu. Dan. I need you, Dan. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's part of an anthology. Okay. I I think like IMDb and other places consider it a TV show, though really it's like a movie. Right. Like it's an hour and 20 minutes. It's a full length standalone kind of thing. Aside from following the same uh, thematic material as the anthology, I guess, mm -hmm. which is holidays. Right. Every, uh, the, the anthology is called Into the Dark. Right. Um, this is, I think, on the second season of it. Right. And every episode is a different holiday. And it's interesting because I haven't seen any of the others, but you have like, you know, your big holidays, Christmas and Easter, Thanksgiving, whatever. Arbor Day. But they also have like the first day of school and Pet Appreciation Day. <laughs> rare random ass holidays like that. I was so, like, I'm kind of interested to see those. <laughs> Could be, I don't know. All right. And I think it's interesting to note because Nico, as someone who didn't know that it was part of an anthology, because when you look this movie up on Hulu, it pulls up just like a movie. Yeah. So did you notice anything that would separate this from a movie to you, or was it just kind of like a movie? I literally had no kind of, I, I don't know, I... No, nah, there was nothing. I was always very aware of the fact that I was watching a movie. It never seemed like, oh, yes, let me look at this very long television episode. Eh, fair. But keep in mind, we've watched episodes of, what was it? Was it The Haunting of Bry Manor or something like that? Bly Manor, Bly Manor, yeah, but like that was already mm -hmm. expressly, like that itself was a series. So watching an episode of a series is different from watching a movie. Eh, that is true. That is true. That is true. Now, I want to go ahead and discuss the tone of this movie a little bit. We've touched on it a little bit with the juxtaposition of the gospel song alongside people vomiting blood and just that whole ludicrous scene. I mean, Dan, what do you think is the tone of this movie? Because it seems like at times it's trying to impart a lesson and at other times it's just kind of taking the piss. Yeah, I thought it was kind of all over the place. I mean, Nico had kind of mentioned this earlier with the coloring, I think, of the film. Right. And how, like, sometimes it looks washed out, CSI Miami, and then other times it's just, I don't know, normal. I feel like the tone of the film does that as well. There's times where it's very serious and other times where, like, they just make dumb quips or something. <laughs> I, like, when they kill, I think the first person that the, the family, the, the protagonists kill... You know, it's like kind of a serious scene. And then the father is just like, did we just do a murder <laughs> as a family? Yeah. And like, I think that was maybe the first like straight joke in the movie. Yeah. There's a couple other like semi humor scenes. But like up until then, I was like, is this supposed to be funny or not? I don't know. And that, that scene just threw me for a loop, you know. So it was weird. I kind of wish that the film had like either gone more humorous or less humorous. Like, I feel like it didn't quite make up its mind. I'm actually pretty spot on with you there. I thought that the movie could be better if it went just like totally ludicrous, which would kind of be the direction I personally would have wanted it to go in. I could really appreciate that. But Nico, are you off a similar mind? See, the way this movie reads to me is that they were up until like i think perhaps the last 20 minutes or something trying to mostly take this seriously but the the fucking finale of this is wild so i like this seems like when you start watching the movie compared to thanks killing which we watched last year which we very clearly knew from going into it was a shit post like i think this is something that is like a very well wrapped up shit post if it's in a comparison to that now i want to take a second and this is perhaps 
not something that this movie quite deserves, but we'll do it anyways. Are there any themes that we can pick apart in this movie? I want to give a special shout out to the very beginning where Cody, she mentions, you know, the kind of fucked up shit that happened to, you know, like whatever you want to refer to them as the first Americans, Native Americans, whatever you want to refer to them as um, the fucked up shit that happened to them by colonists and the people that came here from Europe. And that gets hand woven the first, like, after she says it, her mom's like, just get over it or whatever else. Like, it's not really acknowledged or talked about. It's like, this is not the time for this, which is interesting that the movie chose to acknowledge that up front. I didn't think the movie was going to at all. I didn't either. So that was interesting. But that aside, any other themes that we can pick apart here? I mean, obviously, there's the obvious one, which I'll let you guys go ahead with. Yeah. I mean, the, the super obvious one is being thankful for <laughs> what you have. I mean, <laughs> that's Ethan's whole... And the pilgrims whole thing is you're not grateful for what you have. So we're going to fucking kill you, I guess. Um, but I think there's also a little bit of like, uh, innocence of youth in there yeah. as well, because the younger brother Tate is, I don't know, what, 10 years old, eight, something, something like know. that. And Ethan seems to like him kind of creepily. And I have a feeling that if the pilgrims played everything out and weren't killed, I think kind of think they would have left him alone uh, yeah. because he he hasn't grown up enough. He hasn't become tainted enough, whatever. I don't they know. did start talking to him about, like, the Bible and shit yeah. in that one scene. but Well, yeah. see, that's part of the problem I have with the movie, though, because it looks like sometimes it wants to go a little deeper and maybe a little more serious, but then it doesn't. And the ethan the kind of lead guy he is like really happy when he realizes that tate understands what it is to be thankful he's like i didn't have to like do anything to him for him to understand so now he does understand and i think that's why they leave him alone for the most part because they realize that he doesn't need to learn any lessons it was also weird that scene where he says that because it's fully like he's talking to himself and looking up almost you know in reverence to god but then tate's just looking at him like who the fuck are you talking to <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i want to ask you nico so okay, this okay. is obviously a holiday themed horror movie which we've seen quite a few on our time doing this podcast and more often than not, they can be a little little cheesy at times. Do you think that this movie stands outside of being a holiday movie? Like, let's say it wasn't Thanksgiving. Let's say we watched this movie. Does this movie stand on its own two feet or does it need the backdrop of Thanksgiving? So honestly, I feel like if you took away the window dressing of Thanksgiving, this could have been just a better movie potentially um or maybe not a better movie because it would have it would lose some of its charm for sure but like it could fit much more easily into the palette of a normal horror kind of watchers expectations but like when i was watching this i was thinking that yo this is a lot like that one fucking movie uh the initiation was it the Invitation? Invitation, not The Initiation. I don't think we've seen The Initiation, if that's even a movie. But yeah, The Invitation. Um, it was a lot like that, and it had some beats of sort of like um, social fucking Ponzi scheme vibes. as and, and also sort of like 1BR, oddly enough, which we... <laughs> which gave me PTSD, I swear. But anyway, like, this movie is an interesting thought exercise, and as I've been saying this, I've been hoping to get to some sort of conclusion, but I still don't know. That's fair. Dan, I want to ask you, this is one of the few kind of real Thanksgiving-themed horror movies out there obviously there's thanks killing as well but like by and large thanksgiving isn't really one of those holidays that has a ton of horror movies behind it i think the only other holiday in the mainstream that also 
doesn't really have a ton associated with it is like Easter. But aside from that, I mean, there's a ton for like Valentine's Day and like a bunch of the more quote unquote mainstream days. So what's your thought on that? I don't know. I mean, I think Thanksgiving is a hard holiday to, to do horror on because Thanksgiving is really just like being thankful for what you have. And I guess you could do like, like this movie did Pilgrims or you could even do like pumpkins. Maybe that's more Halloween, but still fall, I guess, but turkeys shit. But I just think the whole idea of Thanksgiving just is, and you can't really twist that to horror. And I think any way that you could just comes off as like humorous and kind of ridiculous to me. So the the only exception I could make is if they did it like almost like Black Christmas, where like in that movie, Christmas is almost just like happens to be the, the date, the time, the setting. Like it's not really Christmas themed so much as, hey, it's Christmas and people are getting murked, you know. Um, so maybe if it was like that, where it's, you know, people getting killed and, oh, hey, it happens to be Thanksgiving, that could work in my opinion. But Thanksgiving themed, I don't think could ever work. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So now it's time for the what would you do? So, yo, do you think they have like Golden Week horror movies in Japan? Maybe. I wouldn't put it past anyone someone must have done Probably. it at some point someone y'all chime in if you find any but for the what would you do it's it's two it's a two-parter here and the first part's going to be for the movie so what would you say would be your choice of action your cody and her boyfriend she finds the body what would you do in that situation call the cops yeah i mean like that is at the same time, the white thing to say. And yeah. okay, here's the fucking thing about this movie. Like, they make a whole goddamn kid and caboodle display in the backyard and like start chopping motherfuckers up. And this is in a fairly like suburban neighborhood and it takes place over the course of like a few days. You're telling me no one was like, huh, this is a little strange. Might want to check this one out there. They even mentioned that, like when they're when the parents are getting tied up to the stocks. I think one of them is like, "The neighbors will hear you," and Ethan's like, "Yep," but <laughs> and then like that's it. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely see that viewpoint. Now, let's say you weren't going to call the cops. What would you do differently? I feel like I would just be a lot more aggressive towards everyone because like realistically the only one who i think would really give any of the three of us some problems is ethan maybe what about the builder he was who was oh, pretty the big dude yeah, oh christ i forgot about that yeah. motherfucker um yeah i just I fucking run dude i would drive to walmart buy a gun and then come back oh shit i mean <laughs> you know the American hunting. way. No, but real talk, like, I don't know. First off and foremost, let me just say this. is the official DOCD stance. We're not inviting no one into our fucking house that we don't know fuck like no. that, bro. Absolutely the fuck not. But secondly, first off, I agree with you. In that situation, I would definitely be like, yo, like, see, but I would also be concerned because you call the cops. You're in the house with the dead body. How are you about to, the pilgrims did it? Bro. They, you would wind up in jail at that point in time. So I don't know, bro. If, if a cop came into that house, saw a dead body, yeah, I'd be a suspect. And they probably wouldn't believe that pilgrims did it until they walked upstairs and saw the butter churning machine oh. thing <laughs> full of blood. I'd be like, see, and the do backyard. normal people do this? I'd be like, yo, go yeah, check my house. In the backyard. Go check my house. I'd be like, look, arrest me right now, but please just go check my house out. Right? <laughs> and, Let's do a trade here. Yeah. True. But if not, I would say Put this, me bro. in your car right now, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, you have the right idea. I would just, you know, be like, listen, it's going down, bro. I would go to Walmart and they may or may not be able to hit you with a firearm, but you could definitely get a cut last from Walmart, bro. So 
run through one or two of those and yeah i'm ready to go to war son they they don't have like any weapons except for like one axe and yeah i would i would have handled it although apparently they're like stab resistant because patients get stabbed in the head and she's like i'm good yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. right okay. in the fucking in the temple oh, what's it in the temple, temple like yeah. right above her eye like it's a small miracle she's not actually dead <laughs> well she is now miracle. yeah big miracle yeah she became translucent after that, so maybe she was dead. Hey, facts. <laughs> well, another thing, too, is... Yo, what if when you die, you actually become translucent? That'd be fucking terrifying. <laughs> just, like, in the middle of an autopsy, dude just goes, Wait, no, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo. Every time? Well, like, there's, a, there's a sidebar about that, but I'll bring it up later. So, there's... Another thing that's kind of cool is Cody apparently, yo, I don't know if she's like an herbologist, if she was a scout of some variety. I don't know what's good, but she clearly knows what Rock poisonous storm. berries exist in the region. And those berries are no, extra poisonous. She definitely was not a scout. They told her like yeah. a day before. Oh, did they? It was like the ones with the green stems are hella poisonous. Don't ask me why they picked those ones in the first place. <laughs> yeah, why did they pick but, them hey. and put them right next to their like their their meal they're like oh no it's like the the judas cherries or whatever and i was like whoa yeah it was kind of yep. weird and i don't i know there are just like plants named shit like that but it also just sounded so out of pocket at the same time <laughs> true and now for the second part of the what would you do in keeping with the last remnants of thanksgiving spirit what's one thing you're thankful for i'm gonna say this podcast Whoa! i'm gonna i'm gonna say this podcast because i get to all three of us are virtual we're all not in the same area so i get to hang out with my best friends and talk about shit i like yeah there you go i'm not even a real person i don't exist but no nah, you translucent. i'm grateful translucent. for justin not existing oh okay there you go Oof. <laughs> Pew pew. <laughs> nah, I mean, I definitely know that she's listening, but I am very thankful for my sister. You know, she's like my partner in crime. Burita. We, we hang out a bunch. Yes, Burita. And yeah, so she's she's always always down to do, you know, like, hey, let's let's go climb a random mountain that Dan told me to go climb. Okay, let's go. So yeah, she she's always down. She's always down. And so I to appreciate her. not give a, a bullshit joke answer, I am also both grateful for this podcast and just grateful for the newfound appreciation that I've gotten for this crazy little fucked up medium that we just dedicate ourselves to. True enough. True enough. Well, that was real fucking wholesome. So let's get serious now. Critic review. I will tell you right now, there must be some kind of glitch in the system, bro. Because I'll just tell you flat out, on Rotten Tomatoes, this entry is not rated by any critics. And it has a 0%. But I think that's because... Damn. I think that's because people might have rated Into the Dark instead of Pilgrim specifically. Oh, uh, that makes sense. But, Luckily, there is an IMDb score. So huh. we're just going to do what we always do on the pod when there is no Rotten Tomato score. We're going to multiply the IMDb score by 10 to get it out of 100 because right now it's out of 10. So where do you guys think this sits on IMDb? Give me your score out of 100. 43. I'm going to say an even 50. Right down the middle. Well, Dan comes through in the clutch because this oh, is shit. actually 5.7 out of 10 or... 57 out of 100 so hmm. well done to you there dan and now i really want to know give me your your final thoughts on the movie and your score i thought this movie was confusing uh, like i said like i feel like the tone was kind of all over the place i wish they had just picked one direction or another that being said there's some entertaining parts and some pretty humorous stuff when when people are just vomiting blood. I thought that was kind of funny. I'm gonna give it a fifty-five. Ah, uh, it was eh, it was all right. You bastard! 
So I'm going to give this one a 55. I thought that this movie was, like Dan said, all over the place. There's seeds here of a good movie, I think. There's potential. We've seen in the horror genre some real strides being made in like, oh, you invite a stranger over or just generally movies about, it sounds cheesy to say, but stranger danger almost, you know, even absolutely. Yeah. Or even things about like home invasion type scenarios. I mean, Dan, we watched hush way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is something here, you know, but this movie couldn't make up its mind which direction it wanted to go. So I think it suffered for that in the long run. So 55 for me. But Nico, where are you at? I'm going to give this one a 60. I'm feeling a little bit more thankful for it, if you will. Whoa. I I had a, an okay time with it, and I, I really did enjoy some scenes. It was just a, I think you said it best, Dan, it was a confusing film to watch. Well... There you have it. But the question is, do we recommend this? I'm going to say yes, because I genuinely don't know of a better, like, Thanksgiving movie that takes itself at least mostly seriously. So if you're into the novelty of holiday-themed movies, I think you could do worse. Um, I'm just going to say no. I, I was going to say no if you weren't going to say no. If you want to watch a Thanksgiving movie... Don't <laughs> Just watch a regular horror movie. You know, I'm sure over the course of us doing this pod, we will find a Thanksgiving horror movie that's worth a damn. I, I fucking <sighs> hope so. Just, just best believe, bro. Best believe. But that being said, this is not going to get the recommendation, meaning this is not going to get the golden seal or anything like that from us. It's going to get the golden turkey. Not even. I would have given it if it was good. But... That being said, hit us up. Let us know what you thought about this one. We're on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter, as long as Elon doesn't burn it down, at D-O-T-D Horror. We're also on Facebook. That's Don't Open That Door. Plus, you can check out everything we've done on our website, which is, of course, dotdhorror.com. But till then, let us know what you're thankful for. Take care of one another. And as always, dear listener. Gobble, gobble. Don't open that door. Bye.